Welcome to Bentley Systems technical discussion on optimizing isolated footing sizes in STAD Foundation Advanced. In this video, we will discuss various governing criteria that affect the footing sizes and how to reduce the footing sizes in STAD Foundation Advanced. In general, footing sizes are governed by soil pressure due to the service load cases. But for practical purposes, we need to consider other factors as well. So in SFA, footing size is governed by considering the following criteria. Maximum bearing pressure and contact area for service load cases. Sliding and overturning for service load cases. Maximum bearing pressure and contact area for ultimate load cases. Because of this different approach, we get several questions from our users on various platforms regarding the footing sizes. So this is an answer to all those questions. Now let's see how these conditions can be identified in SFA and the possible steps that you can do to optimize the footing sizes. The first case would be where the soil bearing pressure for service load cases is the governing condition. Let's start with the stat file. This file is already analyzed and we will now launch SFA from here. So let's select all the required supports and the load cases and combinations and press Start Foundation Advanced. As you know, it will launch SFA and take all the support reactions and the column details to SFA. Here we can review all the reactions and loads and then we'll proceed to create an isolated footing job. Enter the required details here and select the code and we will select a few supports from the GUI and we'll select all the required load combinations and click on create job to finish the job creation. Now we can enter the design parameters. I'll just review these parameters once. I'm not making much changes to the default values. With these values, with these default values, let's go ahead and run the model. Now we have our reports with all the calculations. Let's open the summary results and see the final footing sizes calculated by the program for the default values. For footing number 19, currently the footing dimensions are 4.6 by 4.6. Now let's check the detailed calculation sheet and identify the governing criteria for footing size for footing number 19. Here the program reports the final footing sizes and the governing load cases. The load case reported for the plant dimension is 30. And if you come to the soil bearing pressure table, you will see that for load case 30, footing has the highest soil bearing pressure, which is uh, 118. And this value is checked against the bearing capacity value that we have entered in the program through cover and soil parameters. Now let's review this load case number 30 and if you see the load case number 30 is 1.5 dead load plus 1.5 live load which is a factor load combination or an ultimate load combination. Here the program is actually using all the load cases for serviceability checks and strength checks. The reason is that we have not segregated the load cases as service and ultimate and everything is a primary load case now. And if you go to the load case details, you will find that all the loads are termed as primary. Now we have to segregate them as service and ultimate loads. 
I know that all my load cases uh, from 35 and the ones in the 100 series are ultimate load cases. So I'll tag them as ultimate. You can press shift on your keyboard to select multiple load cases simultaneously. And all my loads in the 200 series are my service load cases. So I'll tag them as service load cases. Now the program will use the service loads for the serviceability checks and the ultimate loads for the strength checks. Let's rerun the file with the segregated loads and look at the results. You can notice now that the footing size has been considerably reduced. Now let's have a look at the governing load case for footing number 19. Here the governing load case is 203 which is a service load case and you can see that load case 203 is highlighted in the gross pressure table. So in this case soil bearing pressure for service load case is the governing criteria for final footing sizes. Now let's look at the next condition where contact area for service load case is the governing criteria. Here in this file, the final footing size is governed by load case 218, which is a service load case. Remember all the 200 series load case were the service load cases in my job. For Now for load case 218, the footing is in partial uplift. Partial uplift conditions occur when the footing has small vertically downward forces and a large moment. SFA reported the area of partial uplift in this table. And if you refer to the cover and soil parameters, we have specified that at least 80% of the footing should be in contact with the soil. That means we allow 20% footing uplift. So here the program will try to increase the footing sizes to keep the contact area within the allowable. If you want to reduce the footing sizes, you can change the contact area percentage to lesser value. But um, the recommended lowest contact area percentage for isolated footing is 50% for service load cases. Third condition is when sliding for service load cases governs the footing sizes. Here let's look at the footing number 23 whose size is 4.9 by 4.9 meter. Final footing size is governed by a service load case and the load case number is 237. Scroll down and notice that 237 is not reported in the soil bearing pressure table. Move on to the sliding and the overturning table. Here are a few load cases were highlighted including 237. And you can notice that uh, the factor of safety along Z direction for to load case 237 is 1.52 which is slightly higher than the required factor of safety which is 1.5. Note that the load case which produces the smallest value of factor of safety will be considered as the governing case. If the calculated factor of safety is less than 1.5, program will increase the plan dimension such that the self weight of the footing which resists the sliding will increase and the footing is stable. Case 4 is where the overturning for service load cases is the governing condition. Note that the load case number 202 here which is a service load case and then scroll to the sliding and the overturning report. For 202 it reports the lowest factor of safety. Here also when the factor of safety goes below 1.5 program will increase the footing sizes to make it stable. Note that uh, while calculating the overturning moments, we also consider the moments caused by the horizontal forces acting at the top of the pedestal as shown here on the screen. Till now we discuss the conditions where service load cases governs the footing sizes, which is the general practice. Now we will discuss about a few situations where the ultimate load case governs. Factored or ultimate load combinations are used for final dimensions only if 
m by p is greater than 0.5 times the dimension calculated using the service loads for either of the two directions. Here m is the overturning moment and p is the vertical force at the center of the footing. As you can see in the figure, if ex or ez is greater than 0.5 times d or 0.5 times b, that means the point of action for the loads falls outside the footing and the footing will overturn. Pending moments and shear forces for the factor loads can only be calculated if m divided by p for those cases is smaller than 0.5 times the footing dimension. So program will increase the footing size to meet this requirement. Based on user request, soil, pre soil pressure check and a contact area check are done for factor loads also. So let's check the case where soil pressure for ultimate loads governs the footing sizes. Here, footing number 27 has a size of 5.3 by 5.3 meter. Let's look into the detailed calculation for footing number 27. The governing load case reported is 45, which is an ultimate load combination. Now we will see where in the calculation sheet this load case has been highlighted. Since it's an ultimate load case, it will not be in the soil bearing check for service load case or in sliding and overturning reports. Here we have a report for soil bearing pressure for ultimate loads. And for load case 45, the soil bearing pressure is the highest. And this soil bearing pressure is checked against a factor value of soil bearing capacity. That factor value is 238 here. Now let's see how we arrived at this value. In the cover and soil parameters, there is a parameter called multiplier on soil bearing capacity for ultimate loads. This factor will be multiplied with the base value of soil bearing capacity and will be used to compare the soil bearing pressure for ultimate loads. The default value for this multiplier is 1.7. So here 140 multiplied by 1.7 will get a value of 238 kilonewton per meter square. So if you want to ignore this check, and reduce the footing sizes, you can enter a higher value for the multiplier, like two or three, and then rerun the file. Now you can see that the footing size has been reduced. And let's review the calculation sheet and See the governing condition now. Now the governing load case for footing size is 203, which is a service load case. And the criteria is soil bearing pressure, as you can see here. Coming to the ultimate soil pressure table, you can see that now the ultimate bearing capacity is 420 kilonewton per meter square, which is 140 multiplied by 3 and the program is checking the soil pressure for ultimate loads against this factored value now. This is how you can bypass the check for bearing pressure for ultimate loads and reduce the final footing sizes. Next condition is where the minimum contact area for ultimate load case governs the final footing sizes. Here the current footing size is 2.9 by 2.9 meter and if we look at the governing load case it is 122 which is an ultimate load case. In the soil bearing pressure report for ultimate load cases you will notice that the final the footing is in partial uplift on the left corner where the soil pressure is reported as zero. It also reports the footing area which is in contact with the soil. Now, if you go to the cover and soil parameters, the percentage of contact area for ultimate loads is given as 80. And if you want to ignore this check, 
we can enter a value of zero here. Note that the default value in, of this parameter is zero. So in most of the cases, this check is ignored. And if you rerun this file, you will notice that the final floating size has been reduced and the program reports a service load case as the governing case. So far, we have discussed about identifying the governing cases and how you can possibly reduce the footing sizes in SFA. We refer to the calculation sheet for identifying the governing conditions. But if you need further information about the calculations or the critical load cases, you can refer to the output pane where it reports all the checks the program does for a footing design. It might be difficult to scroll through the output pane. So you can right click and opt to save it as a text file. Now let's open this file in a notepad and here you will see the detailed steps for a footing design. First comes the serviceability checks. You can notice that the initial footing size was 1.5 meter and program increases the footing size to 1.7 meter for load case 207 to meet the soil pressure checks. Further it increases the footing size to 2.5 meter for load case 211. After the soil pressure checks, it does the sliding and overturning checks. Then goes on to the strength checks like one way shear and punching shear checks. And further, the design is done. So using this text file is another way of finding the governing criteria for footing design.